Hey guys, Talem here, and welcome to Modding Sims 4. Now, I was never really a Sims player until recently. Uh, my eldest daughter was playing her Sims 3 game, and I was looking at it, and I found some of it kind of amusing, so I decided to buy the newer game because for the fact that it can be modded, and there are a lot of things that can be changed. So I decided, hey, a new game to tackle, a new game to experiment with, and I ended up having a surprisingly large amount of fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to mod Sims 4, which is fairly easy. There's just a couple things you got to do. And the management of modding Sims 4 is a little more involved because there isn't really a good manager like there is for Skyrim or the Bethesda games. So it takes a little bit more work to do the upkeep. But it's really, at least as far as my recommendation is, is to not mod this game too much. There's only a handful of mods that are just absolutely essential. And I'm going to show you one of those mods today in um, this quick little tutorial. So, but first, while you're in the game, what you need to do is you need to go up here to your game options, go down to other, and there are two boxes that you need to check. You need to check enable custom content, and of course, that's how you need to restart this game, and you need to check script mods allowed. These are two very important things that you need to have active in the game, and that's pretty much all you need to do within the game to get the mods that you install working. So we're just going to apply changes here, close this out, and we're going to go ahead and leave the game and jump to our desktop. Alright guys, here we are at the desktop and we are going to really get into the meat of what it is to mod Sims 4. Now Sims 4 is fairly easy to mod, but the management, as I said before, takes a little bit of time. That's because the managers for this game suck. So we're just going to do it all manually and let's go ahead and get the file that we want to install downloaded. Now, of course, the MC Command Center is the best mod for Sims 4. Without it, the game just is not very, it's not very good because unlike Sims 3, Sims 4 does not have autonomous play for non-household characters. That means all those other NPCs in the world, they don't get married, they don't have babies, they just don't do much except kind of linger until you decide to interact with them. What this does is it changes all that. It allows them to pretty much have their own lives, to get married, to have children, to progress their family lines, and to die, to kick out their elders, to live in retirement homes, and just all kinds of stuff. The settings are amazing, and it really, really makes the game something fun, especially for a guy like me. That isn't used to playing The Sims, and it wasn't until recently that I decided to throw my hat in with the bunch, try it out, because it's so moddable, and it turned out to be pretty fun and do some crazy stuff with it, and it was great. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and go to the MC Command Center. Of course, I'll provide the link down below for easy clicking for those of you that are Googly challenged. So, let's go ahead and go to Files. Now, you may see this long list. Don't worry. I know it may seem daunting, but you don't need to worry about any of it, except for this right here. This is all you need. A good old all-in-one package. So go ahead and click on it to download. It's going to be very quick because it's fairly small. All right, let's go ahead and open it up. Give this a close, and we'll just leave this right here open. Now, what I'll need you to do is navigate to your Sims 4 folder. It's going to look something like this. And within the directory, you will see another directory called Mods. Go ahead and give that a click. Now, if you don't have a directory named mods for some reason, by default you should. It's a part of the default game. Just go ahead and make one just like this. Now, inside your mods folder, you should have this. As I said before, if you do not have a mods folder, you have to make one naturally. You won't have the resource.cfg. So what you just need to do is make the full file itself. Just right-click, go to New. Make a text document and then rename it resource.cfg. Now, of course, I can't do it because I already have one, but that's all you need to do, and it will make the file. Now, your resource CFG should look exactly like mine. No different. If it looks different, change it. You want it to look just like this. What this does is this tells the game how many directories deep in the mods folder it will look for mods. Now, this is so you can kind of organize your mods into various different directories because, as I said before, there's no mod manager. So this will allow you to, leave, to at least keep everything separate to the best of your ability. Now, go ahead and make your CFG file look just like this. Save it. 
Once it's set, just go ahead and give it a close. So as you can see, my mod folder here, you see all these different types. Now, I kind of set it up into a mix of the authors that make the mods, as well as um, categories like attire for clothing, etc., etc. Now, this is the MC Command Center right here. As you can see, I put the date next to it. This tells me this is the date of the uh, mod that I downloaded. So I know if I look on the website, hey, they got a version that was released, you know, to, after I had changed it, then I know I need to upgrade. I know it may seem a little daunting, but with Sims 4, you really don't need a huge amount of mods. I probably have a lot more than it, anybody needs, but this is just me experimenting and checking the thing out. So what you need to do is just make an MC Command Center directory just like this. Open it up. Grab your goodies here and just drop them in. Of course, I need to replace. You probably won't do that if you don't already have it installed. And that is it, my friends. Let's go ahead and close this. We are now ready to play in modded Sims 4. This will work with every other mod that you decide to add for the game. And now it is going to be up to you to make sure that when you add a mod, that there is no conflicts. Because some mods will conflict with others. Other mods will just stop working when the game is updated. So that's why I say just pick the handful of the ones that you really like. The ones that you just need. And keep tabs. Every time the game is updated, jump over to the website where you got that mod. Typically Mod The Sims. It's my favorite site. I'll probably provide the link down below for that too. So you can jump to that. Just make sure you keep your mods up to date because... A lot of the mods will keep work, working just fine, you know, clothing mods, hair mods, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you get into mods that really affect the meat and gravy of the gameplay, then you're going to need to make sure to keep up on the updating of the mods yourself manually. So that's why I said just go easy. Don't, don't go mod crazy because you'll just tear your hair, hair out. So <laughs> let's go ahead and jump now into the game. I swear I have the burps. I have no idea what it was or what I ate. But it's very hard to say we're down without wanting to just belt your guys' ears off. So I apologize for that in advance. So if it happens, you've been warned. <laughs> so let's jump into the game now. We'll take a look at the MC Command Center and show you some of the changes that can be made to Sims 4. Now after doing all that, guys, when you first start up the game, you should get this pop-up here that shows you the mods that you have installed. Now, you won't have as much as I have here. But what you need to make sure to do is scroll through it and make sure that scripts mods are also showing up because the MC command center will have a few listed. If you have all that showing up, then you know what? You're good to go. If you don't, make sure you go back into the game options here and you have these checked. If those are checked and it's still not showing up, then you need to make sure that you put the directory properly in the mods folder like I showed you before. So just check that, and if that seems to be right, then you know what? I have no idea. Somebody hates you. Just saying. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go into the game. Now, I don't have any kind of save set up because, of course, I'm going to do a crazy Let's Play, and I'll kind of go into more about that at the end of this video just real quick. So we're just going to use the generic character for right now, so we're just going to go ahead and start it up. It'll do its little thing, and... Been Hello, nice lady. Yeah, must shine in yourself. Ooh, can make her creepy. Let's give her big hips. Look at, she's a white Kardashian. All right, let's go ahead. <laughs> um, you know what? I don't want to go through all this stuff here, so I'm just gonna go really quick. Just grab a character from my library. Uh, mine. Now make sure you have include custom content under advanced here checked so you know this kind of stuff will show up. Who, who am I going to test here? Yes, I got a Markiplier one here. The iPlier family because I watched his Let's Play on Sims 4 and it was so just bizarre that I just had to grab a couple of his characters for fun. Because he posted them up on the Sims 4 community board so it wasn't like I took them. I got Boogie in here too. The Boogie Brother the Brothers <laughs> which is of course Francis and Steven himself. So, and I got the Winchester, Sam and Dean. But for testing purposes, let's just grab, and here's Daz Black, of course, and Felicia Day. But you see a lot of these characters. I got Jen Page in here somewhere. There she is right down there. If you don't know who she is, you suck. So who, who am I going to test here with? 
let's just go ahead and grab it. Da, 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 da. All right, let's let's test with Felicia Day here. Let's just replace real quick. All right, so that's all we need. And we just need to give her a home real quick. Where shall you live? I don't care. It's just for testing. So we're going to jump into the quick cabana. Let us do his thing. All right, Felicia. Before we get started, I got to add a computer to this place. Because there isn't one. So... We're just going to real quick just add a table. Let's go ahead and just add a cheap little chair. And let's add the cheapest computer there is. That's because you need a computer to be able to use the MC Command Center. Now you can set it up, I believe, to use it off the character. But I like it to be just on a computer to save the character from having too much menu spam. Which can be problematic. So... What you need to do is that once you have everything set up, you know, you're in the game, you want to set it up, you just click on the computer and go to MC Command Center. Now, as you can see, there's a wide variety of different things that you can change. Now, the MC Command Center does have an add-on that controls Woohoo, which is, of course, Sims version of sexual intercourse, but it does not do nudity. It does not uh, add nude models with uh, exposing body parts, and it doesn't remove the sensor uh, mosaic that appears on characters. If you want that gone, there are some other mods that you can install to get rid of that. But of course, here on YouTube, I'm not going to have a boobies and a genitals gracing your screen for all to see because I want this to be pretty much as family-friendly as possible. So I'm not going to do it. Sorry, guys. I know some of you really, really wanted it. But if you want it, you know, there are channels that I think show it, or you can just do it yourself. But some of the things like in um, population, this one's real important, is you want to use your custom population. You can click on the setting, and it will tell you if it's enabled and what the default value is with the brackets. As you can see, that one is the default value. The reason why you want custom population is because you want to add an autonomous feel to the game that the other characters are actually going about their business you know living having life without just seeming like Stepford drones moving settings so you can move out elders you can move out single sims you can set it to make sure it bypasses your played households for just about everything so all of a sudden your brother or sister grows up and all of a sudden gets married out of the blue out of your control this will avoid all that kind of stuff is by using the bypass bypass household settings under the different categories. So under population settings, you can do a percentage of how many of the population are babies, children, adults, elders, how much of the percentage is male versus female, open houses, the maximum amount of homeless characters. Now, this doesn't mean a bunch of bums walking around your street. This means people, families that don't live in the homes on the map. That means they're just always out and about in the various stores, out on the street walking, People you can interact with at various locations. So I like to make sure my maximum homeless is no maximum. I like it just to have as many as the game could possibly handle. Now there are settings that you can do to adjust how many people show up on a lot. So you're not always running into the same people everywhere you go. I would suggest once this is in here, just going in there and really checking out every single settings. If you don't know what they do, just jump back to the Mod Command Center, the page, and it explains everything in pretty good detail. So you shouldn't have any problem understanding how to set up the game and to, to have some fun. So it would actually be great. Now, I'm not going to be using any joke characters in my uh, uh, Let's Play. I won't be using Felicia Day or or. Daz Black or any of them, as amusing it would be for them to show up, you know, maybe I'll throw one in every now and then, just as like, hey! But in general, I'm going to be using just a, an unnamed character, you know, we'll create somebody, and the whole world is basically going to be kind of, um, I'm going to make it kind of, kind of interesting and crazy, because with the newest release of the new uh, City Living pack, it allows you to add traits to lots and to households. And some of my favorite traits are those like Haunted or Gremlin. 
uh, things that make living dangerous or unpredictable. And I found it so fun and funny that I am going to be basically threatening the lives of my Sims on a regular basis just to see if I can actually have my household survive more than a generation. So it'll be fun. And I think it'll be pretty pretty cool. They have another cool trait like Unflirty, which basically makes your guy uh, or female, if you if you play one, kind of uh, very uncomfortable with the uh, romantic aspect of life, which might be interesting. It might be a trait I use. I'm not sure. We'll go through that as we develop the characters. But the MC Command Center, as I said before, it's essential because without it, this game really is kind of a one-trick pony. I don't know why they changed a lot of things, but thanks, full. we have a mod community. The mod community is amazing in a lot of different games. Without them, the games would be something you eh, you play and you put it away. You know, if, if Skyrim didn't have a modding community, I don't know how many times I would actually play it. Maybe a couple. So with that being said, that's how you mod The Sims 4. That's a quick look at the MC Command Center. Get it, love it, play it, enjoy it, have fun, have a blast. There are several other great mods that you can use to set up your game to how you like it. So just explore, have fun. And it's it's one of the nice things about The Sims 4 is if you put in a mod that breaks your game that just makes it not work, you can just close out your game, delete the mod, and just restart your game. It really doesn't destroy your save, really. Sometimes if, if it's scripts involved... It can screw up your save for a little while. Like you might need to sleep. You might need to do something that resets the clock. But generally, it's fairly safe to remove a mod from the game without it blowing up your save. Unlike other games, you know, to go back to Skyrim again. If you remove a script mod from that one, it can have catastrophic effects on the save itself. But with that being said, all right, guys, enjoy it. Um... If you want to, watch my upcoming Let's Play. It's uh, going to be interesting because I'm not a professional builder in this game. I'm still learning it. So you can see me just acting, just force gumping my way through it. But I hope to see you guys there and I hope you enjoyed this video.